Hey guys here, it's Double Seven here again, and we're going to do a little uh, discussion. This is kind of a segue discussion, I guess you could say. We're going to discuss the concepts of regarding... First of all, we're going to do a little bit of a history lesson with the hunter in the game, and then we're going to parallel that with my uh, proposal, we'll put it that way. But yeah, we'll just kick it off. So. I forget when the hunter was introduced in the game. I think it was three or four years ago. This is rough knowledge. This isn't, you know, get out the books. But this is roughly the experience and perspective of a player who saw the hunter in the game. And one of the things that obviously you would notice about the hunter is it's very much a... Uh, when it was introduced, it was a very irregular fighter for the fact that it wasn't the nose-breathing engine that many of the fighters in the game had been before. We were seeing fighters uh, like the Saber and the MiG, which were the big contenders, the heavyweight hitters, that duked it out the entire time. Though throughout many nations, it was primarily the theme was Korean War era and sub-Korea, or post-Korea, very much near the edge of Korea. And these aircraft ultimately uh, they were very good for the time, and they did very well in the times afterwards. I mean, the Sabre, uh, I think it was the most produced Western fighter. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the most produced Western jet fighter, or fighter overall, that a Western nation produced. Obviously, it exported to many, because we see it in many nations in the game. And there are many nations that aren't even represented in the game that had it, but... Continuing on... When the Hunter was added, it was something relatively new. It was a jet that had a new concept behind it. Obviously, the Sabres and the MiGs were designed for intercepting, but... The Hunter had a very interesting story historically, which it was an interceptor purebred initially, and then later on transitioned to a ground attack role. Obviously, the F-1 model was never designed for ground attack. It was a pure interceptor. But... In the game, it's primarily fit that rollout pretty well and ultimately that was the, the aircraft that was needed when it came to the time when the TU-4 came around. Initially we talk about the Hunter it it did something that was very unique and it was it was capable of pursuing bombers that were at high speed. It was a very fast aircraft. I think it was the second fastest by stat card in the game at the time. This was before the MiG-17 was introduced or it might have been introduced at the same time. But ultimately, the Hunter was super unique in the fact that it had a heavy... It was a heavy aircraft. Heavy, heavy, heavy. And it was all about the firepower and the speed. Never an agility aircraft. Although, not to say it can't do that stuff. It just was kind of outclassed by its uh, Korean War competitors. And that's ultimately what became its playstyle. And it still is its playstyle to that much of a much of the truth but the hunter really came into its own when the TU-4 was introduced to the game and when it was moved from 7.0 to 8.0 it was put in range of 9.0 it was a very hairy experience for a lot of the 9.0 aircraft as most of the 50 cal sabers didn't have the firepower necessary to down the TU-4 so the uh, Hawker Hunter that was designed to down the TU-4 historically, and even some of the other Tupelo bombers found this place right at home. And I think that's kind of the neat part about the game is when these aircraft end up lining up against each other and performing to the roles that they were designed to. So, ultimately with the Hunter, it did really well when the T-4s came around. And you can see that in the, some of the stat cards. Is People racked up some kills, and my stat card relatively shows that. I'm near a, uh, I'm probably about 4.4, like it was like from 4.3 or roughly, towards a 5 to 1 kill ratio, which for jets, especially around this time, are at 9.0 is pretty decent. Uh, obviously the Hunter was very capable of a reputation of that, but we'll, we'll get into why that kind of faded a little bit later on. And uh, here is one of my most favorite parts. This is actually, I think, the only time I've ever gotten a supersonic gun kill. 
in uh, War Thunder. I've done a supersonic maneuver where I uh, dove down, pitched back up, and this is back when mixed battles were a thing, and I ended up going head on in a climb against another hunter and ended up shooting him down with no loss of aircraft. So, but the hunter is incredibly capable. And obviously the attributes go down to its playstyle. And one of the things I really hate is one of the things that, you know, happened recently. Obviously the TU-4 in response to the Hunter and many other aircraft taking upon themselves to down the TU-4 because it was such a major issue in the battles. The Hunter, probably say, I don't know how long ago, say, probably one year after the TU-4 was really, really being hyped. It, it came, kind of became a, an endangered species. You just never really saw it come around. If it was flying, people just reminded it why it wasn't flying in the game. Or people weren't flying it in the game, or they weren't supposed to fly it in the game. So. That's one of the ultimate truths there. But. One of the things about the Hunter that was so unique was its ability to carry in a battle. It had the capacity to really shake up the battlefield and dominate the uh, the opposition because it had that high speed. It could almost escape any opponent. And in some ways, you can fly this uh, the hunter. You can actually outrun a CL-13 fully upgraded. And ultimately, what you have to do is you have to play uh, fight in a high speed light turn. So full power, and you're doing a light turn, not a you know stiff maneuver, hard to the left or right, but you're just doing a light, just slight change in heading, and ultimately that kind of resistance really shakes up the uh, the CL-13. It's not designed for that much uh, resistance, or doesn't have the engine power to meet that of the Hunter. The Hunter is heavier, but the engine power that it gets with it is just enough power that it can swing in that maneuver. Uh, and ultimately that's why the Hunter did really well. It, the firepower was one of the major attributes. Obviously if you hit something, I mean, I recall there were times where I was downing bombers with one burst. I've had times where I downed IL-28 with one 30mm round. And, you know, those kinds of engagements were I'd say really unique to me. And I, I, I never would disagree that the Hunter was overpowered, but to say that it didn't have weaknesses was a very big false picture. And people hit the Hunter for, you know, obviously the tactic you'd probably see with most Hunter players is they would engage the target and then they would, you know, do hit and run. They would hit and then just immediately take off running because obviously most of the aircraft that they engage are more agile than it. And the Hunter can only thing the hunter can do is just keep running and people hit on the hunter for not being able to or not being able to but the fact that the pilots don't ever go back and fight they will only re-engage when they're in a good position and to call a player out for their skill level based on the fact that they have to fly to the aircraft's attributes is pretty ridiculous in this game you have to fly to your strengths and People that disregard that, they think it's just zero versus, you know, A6M2 zero. Gun fight, turn fight, the better man who manages to perform in those regards should be the winner. And that's not the truth at all. You never see someone in the F-15 saying that they should be doing turn fighting with the MiG-29. Obviously, tactics of the modern day can't really be compared into that compared to that degree but overall you don't tell someone a more in a less maneuverable aircraft that they should be maneuver fighting that's why a lot of American pilots died in the Second World War was they were dog fighting when they shouldn't have been and ultimately they won the war because they changed strategy that's the reality people have to accept in this game and people really harp on the hunter because it's really fast and it is fast and powerful but <laughs> doesn't mean that you should be expecting it to do what your saber or your make does. 
So that respect needs to be put in place. And ultimately, people don't respect the hunter for the fact that the hunter can do... Originally, the hunter back in the day could kill a lot better than the 50 cows. And that's true. It could. But in the time period that where 50 cows were buffed to the point where they were doing more damage than 30 mils, that argument was completely invalid. And that's kind of why the hunter kind of died out for a little bit, was the cannons just were not worth it to fight. And uh, that's why I stopped playing my hunter for the most part. I would play it occasionally, just touch on it to see how it was performing in battles, and I was very dissatisfied until they uh, buffed the guns. Then it became a uh, star player a little bit, but it ultimately came back into its own. Uh, when I was playing it with Vixen, uh, the guy I'm squatted with right now, and uh, it just, <laughs> I would still advocate that other aircraft are better than the Hunter, but the Hunter is, has some ground to fight on once more after the cannon buff. And flying in numbers obviously gives you a lot better success rate. But uh, back to the whole history ordeal, uh, continuing on from the fact that the guns were buffed for the Hunter. So the Hunter resumed status as a major interceptor and even sometimes as a game changer, but not to the fullest of what it was back in the day before the cannon nerf. That ultimately set up the Hunter for a supporting role back when it was instituted by some YouTubers was... You just sit back and wait for your time to show up and then fight. And that's that's a true uh, attribute for the hunter, but certainly beyond that, the hunter can do considerable more. Now, this comes to my second part, which is relatively going to be short, but uh, I've come to the idea, this is more, not so much for the hunter itself, but for the nation of Britain. And it's kind of overall for the game. Uh, this is the suggestion that we should see the introduction of the Hawker Hunter F4 model to the game. And obviously people would... If I had said that in chat, in a game, it would explode with absolute outrage. You know, saying, you know, what more do you want from for the Hunter? But, to be honest with you, it would be more for Britain and the game overall. And the reason why I say that is the Hunter F1 can't arm bombs. That's something that the Vautour, the Mark, the Mark IIa, which is the French uh, 9.0 bomber, that's what it's specialized in. Is it's a multi-role aircraft. It can uh, be a bomber. Or it can be a fighter. It's a or an interceptor. It was primarily as an interceptor and a bomber, but people will use it as a fighter in this game, much to the same tactics as the Hunter. But the Hawker Hunter's life, once again, as I said, ultimately became a ground pounder. Or a ground pounder. It became a ground attack aircraft. It was specialized in supporting ground troops and ultimately made sales to many nations under that uh, uh, characteristic. And obviously, like the skin I have here, and you see in some of the videos that I've done, uh, I have the Patrouille de Suisse uh, skin, which is the Swiss Air Force. And the Swiss acquired the, I don't know what model it was, I believe it was, a, I don't think it went as far as F-16 models, not like the AF-16 jet fighter, but the model of the Hunter. They, uh, they went quite, in a quite a consistent series. Obviously, the attributes of the F-4, people are convinced that the Hunter had an afterburner. That's actually not a true statement in the slightest. The Hunter is only armed with, or provided and equipped with an afterburner. Purely as a test to see its, uh, the capability of it using an afterburner. And afterburner was very good on it, except for the part that it consumed so much fuel that the Hunter was pretty much useless because it was burning up more fuel than it could utilize in a long-duration mission. So they ended up uh, looking at not using afterburners, but providing hard points for the aircraft in the later models. And 
you would see that, oh, not in that, but you'd see that in the Hunter where they put hard points on the inner and outer parts of the outer landing gear. Well, probably not here, but on the outer bits of the landing gear. You saw the role that the aircraft could uh, play in ground attack. And there's a great documentary. I'll link it in the upper right-hand corner about the Hawker Hunter, if it's still around. Hopefully it is. But, hey, talk about the F-4 model. Playing a role eh, largely as a ground attack aircraft or a ground support aircraft. And it, it did had a great success rate uh, with the Indian Army, uh, or the Indian Armed Forces, I shouldn't say. I shouldn't specialize the Army. It was an Air Force aircraft. But it did work with the Jordanians, and obviously did work for the Israelis, or not the Israelis, the Swiss. And I gotta say, that's something that we have to keep in mind. Obviously, what would we see in the F-4 model versus the F-1 model? We'd probably see a greater top speed. And if we were to say that those would be some of the issues was a higher top speed for the aircraft, I would almost be tempted to say, so what? But even if that, going beyond that, I would say I'd be okay seeing it go to 9.3 or even 9.7. I'd be hesitant to say 9.7. 9.3 I'd be just fine with. And the reason why I say 9.3 is it would put it out of, rate, out of reach of 8.0 aircraft that would just not be able to handle that raw amount of speed. It's not like it's a major upgrade. This was The difference between the F-1 and the F-4 was the reliability. The F-1 had tremendous teething problems. And by the F-4, they had pretty much figured them out. And that's... I wouldn't say it would have more speed, because it would roughly be the same engine, just performed in, performed, performing better in the regards to maintenance and reliability. And there are other issues with the aircraft. And they can't models in the game for the obvious reasons, but the reason why I say we need the F4 model is not so much for the performance of realistic battles. Obviously it could be specialized in that, but hardly any of these aircraft, besides the bombers and the Venom and even a little bit of the Vampire, there's no real high-tier aircraft that specializes as a 9.0 mainstay air superiority fighter but can also double as a ground attack aircraft. And that's ultimately the point that I'm trying to drive at. We need to see an aircraft that can support... And it was interesting uh, with some of the players I've played with. They will keep the Hunter in their lineup for ground realistic battles, but they'll load it with the ground attack ammunition and use it for counter AAA efforts, which I think is very neat to see them using that. Not much of a difference in cost, but it's not very there's not very much it can engage. Obviously it could probably rip up uh, some BMPs, some stuff like that. I don't know what the armor of the BMP would be on the roof. It would probably be easy enough to shred. But that's just one of the things I have to say is just <laughs> Oh look at the BMP too. Yeah. No, it definitely could shred this armor more than easily. I bet the Cals could go through that, even probably some 7.7s. But ultimately, I'm just saying that give Britain a ground attack aircraft, and in giving Britain a ground attack specialized or capable aircraft for their air forces will help it out in ground forces. It just We need to see aircraft that supports the ground for some of these nations. Japan has a all the countries that have the Sabre, or even the G91, which is a similar aircraft, they have great uh, <laughs> air support. Obviously, Italy doesn't have ground forces yet, but still, an air support's ready for them when they're introduced to the game. Same could be said for the Soviets. They have some very nice aircraft, such as the MiG-17, carry the tiny Ivan large rockets. They can do quite a bit of damage. Obviously, the French can do quite a bit of damage, but you don't really see that with the, the British. They just lack that ground attack capacity. And I think it's very unfortunate that that's the case, because they had some very capable aircraft during the Cold War. So, ultimately, I'll leave it with that, the proposal. Put a poll up there in the upper right corner for, do you think the F-4 should be added? And uh, if you don't think so, I tell you what, what's the comment why? I just want to know what the hell could possibly be going against the F-4 that the F-1 can't do already, besides the ground attack capacity. 
So I'll leave you guys all with that. I'm 007, and I will see you guys later.